Around three months ago, we took a look at the Voxelab Aquila, which is a low-cost FDM 3D printer. I had gotten a ridiculous amount of comments and requests to check out that printer, and overall, I was really impressed with it for its low price point. And if you didn't see that video, I'll place a link in the description, but the main takeaway was that it is essentially an Ender 3 V2, but with a better user interface, and it's about $70 to $80 less. Shortly after, Voxelab reached out to me, letting me know that they were going to be releasing a new, bigger version of their Proxima resin 3D printer, and asked if I was interested in testing it out. Having been very pleased with their Aquila FDM printer, I was really curious to see what their resin printers were like, and I agreed. So in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the Voxelab Proxima 8.9 inch. We'll go over the printer specs, we'll go over what setup was like, what print quality looks like, and then of course, like I always do, I will give you my final thoughts on this machine. As much as I do love my small resin 3D printers, it is really exciting to see more of these, what I would describe as mid-sized resin 3D printers becoming available. And I've been testing out the Proxima for the past month here, and I am really excited to share with you guys what my experience has been like. So without further ado, let's get right to today's video. Massive thanks to Thanks for sponsoring today's video. With over 2 million index models in their database and growing regularly, Thanks finds the exact model that you're looking for. Thanks has some pretty unique features, like the ability to perform a geometric search or the recently added AR mode that I love. I'm a very visual person, and having the ability to place a 3D model in your space before actually printing it for reference can be quite useful. Also, it's a lot of fun and can make for some great photos. There are also great collaboration functionality baked right in, like the ability to create a private team for working on projects where you can keep track of things like different model versions as well as revisions. You also have the ability to follow a user's project, which is great for any that are actively being updated. Things has been developing new features for their site constantly, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this platform continue to expand. Links will be in the description so that you can find out more and check out things for yourself. Before jumping into the specs, I did want to state that the Voxelab Proxima and the Voxelab Proxima 8.9 inch that we're covering in this video are two very different machines. But for the sake of not saying Voxelab Proxima 8.9 inch, I'm just going to refer to it as the Proxima, but know that I'm talking specifically about this new 8.9 inch version. As the name implies, the Proxima 8.9 inch features a 4K 8.9 inch monochrome LCD screen, giving you a build volume of 192 by 120 by 200 millimeters. With their much quicker print times and much longer lifespans, I think it's safe to say that all resin 3D printers from this point forward are or should be monochrome screens and for good reason. The build plate on the Proxima is aluminum with a slant on top to prevent resin from building up and is either sandblasted or coated, giving it some really serious texture to help with adhesion. The build plate rides up and down on two really beefy linear rails and one lead screw. The vat is also aluminum with replaceable FEP, and based on the feedback I got from you all on my review of the E10, that definitely seems to be heavily preferred over the injection molded vats. Interfacing with the Proxima is done via the touchscreen on the front that has the same easy to use CHIT2 systems menu found on many other resin printers. On the right side of the printer, there is a full size USB port as well as an ethernet port. Although I'd much rather see Wi-Fi as an option for these printers, this will at least allow you to send files from Chit2Box to your printer if you are hardwired in and have a flash drive plugged into your printer. On the back of the printer, you will find an exhaust fan, vents, as well as your power input jack and on-off switch. The Proxima came packaged very nicely and was both wrapped and encased in thick foam. Along with the printer, you'll also get an accessory box that has just about everything you'll need to get up and running. However, like many resin printers, there is no included resin, so make sure if you do end up picking up this printer that you order at least a bottle or two of resin or you will be very disappointed. Like most other resin printers, this setup is quite simple and involves attaching the build plate, loosening the build screws, and then homing the build plate so that way you can then tighten those screws and make sure that the build plate is flat up against the LCD screen. This is the first resin 3D printer that I can recall where even having the build plate as loose and far away as I can get it from the LCD screen, it was still too tight. And so the solution for that was to manually jog the build plate using the menu and setting these uh, zero via the firmware. For those of you that prefer to, I do think that it shouldn't be too difficult to physically adjust the end stop to make it where it triggers a bit sooner in case you don't want to set the zero via firmware and prefer going the hardware method. Once I had the bed dialed in, I hopped over to the computer to get a file sliced up for printing. 
On the flash drive, they do include their voxel print software, which I did install briefly. If you haven't used a resin printer before, it may be fine for getting started, but it does feel quite limited compared to something like Chitubox or Lychee. Also, some of the design settings were odd to me, like having the rafts in the final slice menu and not being able to see them in the preview window. Luckily, this printer works fine with Chitubox and their previous Proxima has a built-in profile. I ended up taking that profile and just changing the build size and resolution for the 8.9 inch by copying the Saturn's resolution. It does look like the previous Proxima also has a profile in Lychee, so you should be able to do the same thing there, giving you complete control over which slicer you want to use. For those of you that have been resin printing for some time, let me know in the comments down below what your preferred slicer is, whether it's Chitubox, Lychee, or possibly some other slicer that I haven't even used yet. Ready to print, I downloaded the Little Big Heads Jason model from Chaos Cortex to be printed in Sariatex Glow-in-the-Dark Craft Resin. Actually, the entire video I released a couple weeks ago on the Glow-in-the-Dark Resin was printed on the Proxima. If you didn't get a chance to check out that video, I will place links down below in the description, but I will also place some footage of those different prints that uh, I got off of this machine in this video as well, so that way you can take a look. But the Proxima did an absolutely fantastic job of printing this very, very unique resin. The only model that gave me any problems was the Articulating Shark, which was just a difficult model to print. It took me a couple of tries to get the orientation and the supports correct, and uh, when I cured it, the jaw did lock to itself, but all of the other joints move freely, and it is a really, really fun model to print out. Although I do typically stick with one resin in the resin 3D printer reviews, the glow in the dark resin, although awesome, was very difficult to get the details to show up accurately on camera. So I decided to swap over to some of the Sriatec Fast Navy Gray resin that I've been wanting to use. During the process of cleaning out the vat and the build plate, I did discover something that was a bit of an annoyance to me, which is on the top of the build plate where sort of the mounting bracket attaches to the build plate, there is a flat section with four screws. And if you've got a full vat, when the build plate dunks into the vat, resin is going to flow all over those four screws. And it was incredibly difficult to try to get a paper towel or any sort of cleaning uh, rag or anything in there to clean up all that resin adequately. You could definitely take the build plate off and completely soak the thing in something like IPA or water to try to brush it off. But it is certainly a little bit of an annoyance trying to uh, clear off all of the resin that has kind of gotten trapped on top of the build plate. With the glow resin cleaned out as best as I could get it and the navy gray poured in, I found an awesome model of Sonic the Hedgehog by 3D Designer over on Things that I downloaded. Originally, I tried to print him solid, but I ran into issues with the supports not holding well enough, which made for a pretty epic fail. I've printed similar models with the same support settings in the past without issue, so I do think it's still a case of the build plate being a bit too close to the FEP, causing aggressive peel force. I then took the exact same model, hollowed him out, positioned him a little bit differently, and was able to get a successful print. For those of you that did spot it, yes, he is missing his nose, and that is not the printer's fault but my doing. When I cured him, I grabbed him from the cure station by his head, and his nose was so delicate that it snapped off and flew somewhere in my living room, so there is a small Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> nose somewhere on the ground in here. Once done with the Sonic model, I wanted to do something with a bit more detail. That's when I stumbled across the Decimator Squire Warbot. This is an awesome looking mech, and unlike anything I'd printed before. For this model, I did decide to keep him solid and I angled him at roughly 45 degrees before adding supports. I was really happy with the way this print turned out and also really like this navy gray. There's a ton of detail in this model, but I think it would be an awesome one to paint. Lastly, I had to print out a couple of miniatures and I headed over to MZ4250's Thanks page. I've covered his minis in at least one or two other videos, but he currently has something like 700 models uploaded and I feel like every time I turn around, there's a new batch of models that he has created and uploaded. So if you are looking for someone to follow or to check out for some tabletop miniatures, his stuff is insane. And again, links will be down below in the description. I ended up grabbing like four of his barbarian models, rotated them and printed them out. They all turned out awesome and it was a perfect time for me to bust out my macro lens adapter to get some photos, thanks to all of your suggestions in a previous video. It is really insane seeing the little details and all of the teeth, hair, and just the clothing and various textures that are near impossible to see with the bare eyes. With this last batch of prints, I did notice that some of the IPA in my clean station clearly needs to be replaced. The little white spots on some of these minis and the mech are from the standard gray model resin that I have used in the past. 
I've really enjoyed using the Proxima 8.9 inch and it seems like a very well built machine that is on par with the other mid-size resin 3D printers that are out there. I don't think it's any surprise at this point that the 4K monochrome LCD screen resin printers is a great recipe for some high quality prints and the results really do speak for themselves. Also having that monochrome screen again is so nice compared to the earlier days of resin 3D printing which was just like a year, year and a half ago where it took a lot longer to print out the models with just the standard LCD screen. One definite plus of this resin printer is its compatibility with the Voxel Lab or Voxel slice, uh, Slicer, the Chit2 Box Slicer as well as the Lychee Slicer. I really do like that you've got complete uh, open capabilities to print or use whatever slicer is your preferred slicer. And the only real things that I wasn't crazy about with this was the initial leveling was a little bit interesting being again that I had to adjust the zero via the screen instead of doing it by hand like I'm used to and the annoyance of the resin pooling up on top of the build plate where those screws are at but other than that I don't have any major complaints. It seems like the Proxima 8.9 inch is positioned to be a direct competitor to the Elegoose Saturn and I'm not just talking about the size as well as the specs of it but even looking at the two they chose the exact same color scheme as the Elegoo Saturn and I don't necessarily think that it is a terrible idea given that the Elegoo Saturn is a very popular machine that a lot of people like but it would have been nice to see Voxel Lab innovate on that just a little bit. For example, something even as simple as a built-in carbon filter, which is something that the current Saturn is lacking, would have been really nice to see and would have given it a bit of leverage on top of the Elegoo Saturn. That being said, I do know that when I made my review of the Elegoo Saturn, there was quite a few people in the comments that were not happy about things like the availability or the way that pre-orders were handled. So I do think that there is certainly a place for this machine, if it not just being an alternative option for those that prefer, you know, a different brand than the Elegoo. But I do wish they had done a little bit of tweaking to possibly add some additional features on top of the really solid base unit. Retail price of the Proxima is 500 US dollars, which is the exact same at this time as the Elegoo Saturn. However, while I was editing this video, I did see over on Amazon that there was a 10% off for the Proxima 8.9 inch, bringing it down to $450, which seems like a pretty good deal for a printer with these specs and this size. So if that is no longer going at the time of making this video, perhaps it's worth holding out and seeing if you can find another deal like that, because you can then take that and throw it towards maybe a bottle or two of some low cost resin like the Soriatech Fast or even picking up a spare FEP sheet to have on hand. And that is the Voxelab Proxima 8.9 inch resin 3D printer. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. If you do have any additional questions, as always, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer. And if I don't have the answer, I have no problem reaching out to the manufacturer and doing my best to get those answers for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below in the description over to my Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of my existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace guys.